The purpose of my life is to have a good death. And to me, a good death is feeling like I have done everything that I could with my time in this life. I really love the scene in the movie 300 where the Persian messenger is threatening King Leonidas. King Leonidas is um, leading a very small army of warriors, 300 men, up against this giant behemoth, right? So it's this huge compilation of many, many armies, and they're just advancing on them in a manner that is just would be absolute suicide to attempt to defeat. And so the messenger is laughing and he is threatening um, the Spartans and he's saying, we have so many arrows that when they rain down on you, they will blot out the sun. And King Leonidas smiles and he says, then we will fight in the shade. And I really, I really loved reading and learning about the Spartans who were Greek soldiers renowned for just being deadly, highly committed soldiers. They had really strict codes of honor. They relished the idea of a gory death in war and they were not afraid. And they even did certain things like uh, wore their hair long or in ponytails um, just to kind of mock their opponents because it was well known uh, during war or as a soldier that you never wanted to have long hair because it put you at a disadvantage that someone could reach out and grab your hair. But these guys did it on purpose to kind of give a middle finger to whoever they were fighting. And there is even a scene where the arrows have rained down upon the army and they're hiding under their shields. And the character played by Michael Fassbender, I think it's Dionides, he looks at his fellow soldier and he smiles and he says, fight in the shade and they start laughing. And I love that. To me, it also reminds me of the Stoic principle of memento mori, right? Remembering death. And um, another line from another one of my favorite movies, Gladiator. I talk about this principle to a certain degree in my book that I've written about how I've faced death numerous times. And, um, giggled and laughed every time I came out of some surgery or, you know, got revived on a hospital table or something. I have that kind of relationship with death where I try to remember that, you know, the purpose of my life is to have a good death. And to me, a good death is feeling like I have done everything that I could with my time in this life, that I have tasted a fruit from every tree I found in nature that I have enjoyed every simple moment, that I have improved the lives of my fellow man, that I have worked to overcome my vices and develop my virtues. I'm finding now during this time, um, this is probably the worst time that I've seen in society. Um, I knew a time like this was coming and I knew it from a very young age. We are in an age where we will be seeing great acts of wickedness and we must remember our virtues, we must develop a community, and we must stay strong and remember the real point of life and uh, stick to our principles no matter what. I have always really enjoyed videos about warriors and fighters and uh, people who live by a code of virtue and honor. Uh, some of my favorites are Mortal Kombat. I love the Mortal Kombat movie. I don't care what anyone says. The Skrillex song, Reptile, I think that was on the soundtrack. I love the Mortal Kombat theme soundtrack that was damn good too um, and I love the end where Liu Kang has to I think it's face your enemy face your worst fear and face yourself you know there's some aspects of that movie that could be cheesy but I just find it so inspiring and I don't know I really like it I also really uh, like Gladiator 
I try so, so, so hard, but I always cry at the end. I also find the movie The Grey with Liam Neeson to be a really profound movie as well. Uh, I've said it before, but that's not a movie about wolves. And anyone who has uh, faced great difficulty in life, um, or even just soul-shattering depression, will understand that that's not a movie about wolves. 100% recommend to watch that movie. But don't let it make you be afraid of wolves, because they're nothing like that pretty much ever. Um, I've encountered wolves in the wild. I've heard them howling. They're not interested in people. They're scared like any other animal. So... The Leonidas quote in the movie where he says, then we'll fight in the shade, it was actually included in Plutarch's Saying of the Spartans. I would actually really love to get a hold of that book. But anyway, what he actually, um, the way he refers to that saying is that he said something to the effect of, oh, is that the case? Well, won't that be nice? We'll have shade to fight in, right? And I just kind of love that too. Your enemy is saying all these threats and all the things they're going to do to you and how there's no point in fighting back. You might as well give up. And you're just taking the things that they're throwing at you and using them to make yourself stronger. It reminds me of a couple of things. One of them being uh, David Goggins' book, the part he talks about taking souls, which is where he had like an army general who was trying to break him down by like making his life difficult. And, you know, he was he, the army guy thought he was looking forward to something and David Goggins like refused it. And he did extra, extra work to the point where this guy was just so devastated that he didn't get his glee over watching him fail. David Goggins talks about using taking souls in your own life, which is basically, I would say, not letting your competition or anyone who or your enemies get to you or wear you down and to always come out on top even better than before so that you've taken their soul so that they're looking at you and they just feel in their heart you know this bitterness that they didn't get what they wanted from you i find a really good way of doing that is just being undisturbed and i think i've become quite good at that um, just because I used to be a miserable person. I used to give people a hard time. And it was because I was miserable inside. I was depressed. I was sad. Uh, I would look for things to in other people and criticize them for it or go after them for it because I was in a lot of pain. And um, I didn't have the awareness to be aware that it was about me, it wasn't about other people. So I feel that in this life, once we achieve that awareness, we have an obligation to be patient with those who have not. And so if people want to give you a hard time, I find a really good um, way of dealing with it in a way that is compassionate and that can have a positive outcome is nonviolent communication. I'll link a video to that below. Don't let the title throw you off. I don't think that communicating can be quote unquote violent, but um, it's a bad title, but the theory and practice is top notch for becoming a better person in general. Fight in the Shade also reminds me of the kind of fable of the donkey who had a mean owner who said, you're completely useless and threw the donkey down the well to die. And the donkey wouldn't die. So the owner started throwing rocks down at this poor donkey in the well. And every time the man threw rocks, it started to make a pile in the bottom of the well. And ev with every rock, the donkey took one step up closer and closer to the top, got out of the well, and ran away. And I love that, of course, too. Um, that, to me, again, is fighting in the shade, which is smiling with the mischievousness and awareness that you may have a good death awaiting you if you face difficulties in your life with valor and courage.
I had to fight in the shade a lot as a child growing up. The shade cast by my mother's shadow and her constant abuse and bullying of me that began when I was two years old. I remember I was trying to find myself. I've always been interested in God and spirituality and deeper things, and I used to keep a journal, and I would write my private thoughts in the journal, and one day she found it and, you know, freaked out and said, what if somebody read this and they thought I was abusing you? What would they think? Right, of course, I didn't really have anything to say. I didn't, I, I learned at a young age not to argue with crazy and irrational. Um, but it, it's kind of funny because it's like, well, if you don't want your kid to write that you're abusing them, then how about don't abuse your kid? But no. So there were many little things that I was doing to try and help myself that wasn't hurting anyone, but there was this shadow over me trying to disassemble or pull apart anything that I did. Right? I talked about um, before how um, at a young age I decided I want to be a veterinarian, and I remember thinking I've always had a mind for service and solutions and giving and being generous with um, my skills and my time. And I remember thinking, there was a vet clinic across the street from my house. It was a bit of a walk. I was this young kid. I was poor. I was weird looking. But I had a really good spirit, and I was smart. And I showed up to this vet, and I asked, can I volunteer here? I'll do whatever you want. I'll help out. I just want to learn how vet clinics work and be around this. Is, is that okay? And he had to think about it. You know, this kind of weird underage kid just shows up out of nowhere, probably couldn't afford a veterinarian if my life depended on it. Wait. And yeah, he gave me a chance. And then one day, you know, I'm getting ready to leave for my vet volunteer job after school. And my mother, this behemoth on the couch smoking, says, you can't go. No reason why. Just, you can't go. So there's me. I'm a kid. I, there's nothing I can really do about it. Um, looking back, I wish I would have just ignored her because she was so lazy that the worst she probably would have done is yell at me after. I wish I would have kept going, but I gave in at that time. But I never gave up on starting businesses, volunteering, looking things up, uh, trying new things, starting ventures. You know, I would teach the kids in the neighborhood crafts and I would organize um, marble events and I would uh, sell, I would repackage toys and sell them for money. I had this unbeatable presence over me for 20 years of my life and I never gave up. And I hope that these words can inspire you during this historical time that we're living through no matter what it is you face. If it comes down to it, let us all fight in the shade together. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.